to commit to something means to deliberately act in a certain way. We have to be deliberate in the way that we act. We have to be deliberate in the things that we do. It is to pledge or assign yourself to a particular course or an assignment. Commit is to obligate yourself or bind yourself to something. And so on today, I am committed to the future, receiving the harvest. Everyone say, receiving the harvest. Everyone, uh, touch yourself and say, I am going to receive the harvest. I'm going to receive the harvest. There are so many great things before your family. So many great things. And we cannot let our past success or failures or our present success or failures deter us from our future windfall or our future harvest. Harvest is defined as the period of time where you gather, where you get what it is that you've been sowing or what you've been doing. And we talked about sowing last week, but we'll just touch on it a little bit today. What you have been planning. It's you will receive in an abundance what you have planted. Those who came up here and tithe and gave on today. Tithing is more than, it's not like a slot machine family where you put money in and get three quarters back out. But it means so much more than just money. Amen. Amen. Sowing. Sowing. Everyone say sowing. sowing. Sowing is a scatter seed. What is your seed? It is the result of your actions. Your seed is the result of your actions, whether verbal or your disposition or your actual or, or, or your actuality of who you are, the, re the reality of you. Every day we are releasing something to our future. And so we must ask the question, what am I releasing? We have to be committed to releasing. No, we have to, first of all, we have to know and recognize what we are releasing. Have you walked into somebody and somebody's just giving out bad vibes? You just, mm, what are they doing? They ain't saying nothing. They just, you're releasing something. You're releasing something, amen? Some of y'all looking at me right now, releasing something. Seize <laughs> all on your I'm like, mm. But most of you all, 99.9% .9 of you all, are releasing all this goodness and things happening. Around. Every day we are releasing something. Since I know that a harvest is coming, it's up to me to decide what am I going to abundantly receive. The Bible says, whatsoever you sow, you gather. Whatsoever is signified, it signifies this that you sow or that that you sow, you shall reap. Whatever that is, you're going to reap it. Somebody say, whatever it is, you're going to get it back. And it's coming back in abundance. Yeah, that's why we have to make sure that what we give is something that we want to come back. We know it is the law of repro um, 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 reciprocity. So it's important how we sow. So righteousness, righteousness, this word in the Hebrew means a right attitude or right actions. Hosea um, 10 and 12 of the New International Version says, so righteousness for yourselves. I'm living holy so that people can know that I'm holy. No, so righteousness for yourselves. Then you shall reap the fruit of unfailing love. The children of Israel were shepherds, so they knew sheep. But when they came into Canaan, they found farmers. It was a practice they were unfamiliar with. And the land was, was so fertile, they were astonished that the Canaanites, they came in there, and they said, wow, look at this land being fertile like this. What could it be? Well, the Canaanites taught that the reason the ground was so fertile was because of the worship of Baal. And so, they be, so when you worship Baal the way you sacrifice, you sacrifice the same way the children of Israel would sacrifice to God, they would sacrifice to a god or a demigod that they called Baal. It was Baal worship. They would sacrifice animals. You know, children of Israel during that time, they, they abhorred pigs or swine. There weren't pigs then, but they were swine. But the, the, um, the Canaanites, they would also sacrifice swine. If things got really bad, the famine got really bad, then the Canaanites would um, sacrifice their children. And so the children of Israel, because they saw this and they said, wow, this is the way that we ought to live too. So they start, okay, we'll serve Yahweh, you know, because he is, that's why in one verse, he is the God of the mountain, but Baal is the God of the, of the land. They said, we'll serve Yahweh here, you know, for our sheep, but then we'll, we'll serve Baal here. But how I many you know you can't serve two gods? You can't serve two gods. And, Israel, and their attitude is what works for them, it will work for us. What they didn't understand that the Canaanites were going to be destroyed. And sometimes we don't understand how our living righteously 
is keeping us from destruction. See, be careful of those. The Bible, David talks about those who are just for a moment, they seem to be rising up, and then the next thing, they're just chafed, blown away. Don't get jealous because of evildoers. Don't look at somebody doing wrong and see them lifted up and say, well, I might as well do what they do. No, uh -uh. you have to make sure that you begin to continue to live, have the right action, and have the right attitude. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. It, it, keeps, it was keeping them from destruction. They didn't realize that. The reason that God brought them and saved them is because of righteous living. They walked into a somebody else. He, they didn't know that the Canaanites were about to be thrown, thrown out. You don't know that the person next to you is about to lose their job. Don't start doing what they're doing. Amen. You ever see people you went to school with? Paul talked about it today. And you look at them, you're like, oh, my God, they look 80 years old. But because you live righteously, look at somebody and say, you see how good I look? Yeah. Now, don't be hating. Don't be hating. Don't be hating. It is the unfailing love of God. It is the unfailing mercies of God. Hallelujah, that we are not consumed. It is the unfailing mercies of God that blocks or takes down the sins of our forefathers or even our own sins that have been sown and would bring destruction to grow up in our lives for the bad seeds that we've sown. That's why we have to sow seeds of righteousness, right behavior, right attitude, and God will block what has grown up many times in our life to destroy them. How many know that you do sow some bad seeds sometimes? I'm glad. One hand, one hand. Okay. Okay. So I'm letting you know. You have to put your hand up, but we know it's you. Okay. It's all of us. We all sow some bad seeds at times. And that's why we have to sow righteously, because when them bad seeds come up, we need to reap in mercy. We need the unfailing love of God to shut all that stuff down. Pastor Damien said last week, being righteous in our giving rebukes the devourer. The bad seed sown, God, rebu God rebukes, and the good one sown with, the, with a bad attitude. You know, there's people who do good but do it with a bad attitude, and it's still bad seed. The Bible says many will stand before God, and they will say, God, I've done many great and marvelous works in your name. And he said, well, you did them out of iniquity. Your works were of iniquity. Just doing good is not enough it if it does not, as Layla Nay say, flow from the love of God. Amen. God keeps back the locusts from eating up what you have planted. We were play, praising God for the good things that did happen, but we ought to give God praise for the bad stuff that he canceled in your life. See, we just praise him. God, I know you're going to do something. We praise him for all the good stuff that happened in our life and all the great things that happened, but we don't know how many bad things God blocked. When you were on the highway and that drunk driver should have hit you. Come on, when you were in school and, that, and all of us, your children were in and God blocked it on your behalf, why don't you take just a couple seconds to give God praise for what you never knew that he did. Then later on, you'll look and say, oh my God, God, you protected me from that. God, you delivered me from that. And I didn't even know you did. Hallelujah. God, I praise you for what I don't know you did but I know you must have done something. If you made it this far, let me let you know he blocked something for you. If you are still in your right mind, let me let you know that God blocked something from you. Where the enemy and the devourer was trying to steal from you, God showed up and fought for you. So you ought to give him praise for what you don't even know. Hallelujah. All right. Whatsoever you sow, whatsoever the righteous sows, there is a supernatural return. So sow in tears. Psalms 126 and 5 says those who sow with tears will reap songs of joy. Yeah, it's all right to cry. Because I'm letting you know when the, when the righteous person cries, you sow in tears, but you're going to reap in joy. Sow the word. Someone say, sow the word. Oh, yes, yeah. so that word, Isaiah 55, 10 through 13, as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out 
from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It will accomplish that I, what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Look at, look at what, this is what happens when you begin to speak the word over your life. When you begin to say positive, come on, you begin to say what God says over your life. When you speak this, you will go, you will go out in joy. You'll be led in, forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burf, burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands because you showed up. Can you imagine all nature? You wonder what all that noise is. It's because you sold the word and all, listen, all of the elements are just clapping their hands. You ought to walk through the forest one day and just listen to them because God is giving, God is thanking you for sowing the word over somebody's life and sowing the word over your life too. Say, I'm going to sow the word over my life. Instead, in, instead of the thorn bush, instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Look at all the things that will happen supernaturally in our lives when we sow the word. That is why when you are mad, may I say we? Come on. I don't want, I'll, I'll try to be careful when I say you. But I'm going to let you know that I got to make sure I sow the word too. I believe I am, but you never know. So when you when you sow, when you are mad, when you are upset, when you, when you are bitter. Okay, okay, I got the weed, y'all. I got to go down with me. All right, I'm ready. Get well, over here with all that weed. Weed in France over here. When we are mad, when we are upset, when we are bitter, when we are wrathful, we need to hush. Come on, let me say it again. When we are mad, when we are upset, when we are bitter, when we are wrathful, what do we need to do? Hush. All right, I didn't say shut up, I said hush. Because your words will reap also. There's life and death that is in the what, family? Pastor, I just speak, my, I just speak what's on my mind. Well, Saint, you are foolish because if you Thing on your mind, if you trust everything your mind is saying is right, you are ruining what good you can have. James 1 and 9 says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to be angry. The King James Version says slow to wrath. Wrath is a state of anger. It's when you just stay mad. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9 says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of a what? Rest in a minute. It just stays there. You stay angry. You got to get, you gotta get off of you. you. You stay angry and you're going to do something foolish. Why you're getting quiet on me now? You say, I, you ain't better. The Bible said the wrath of God, the wrath of God worketh the righteousness of, and I'm saying it right? The, uh, yeah, well, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. It is only God that can swear in his wrath and do righteously. You can never do righteous in your wrath. You can never make a good decision, a best decision, or anything. Don't discipline your children in your wrath. Don't talk to your wife or your spouse in your wrath. Don't go to your job in your wrath. Listen, when we see you coming, listen, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Wait, because you are in your wrath, and you can never do anything right in your what? Because it's rested in you and you will do something foolish. The seeds that will scatter out of your mouth when you are angry. I was, we was riding with somebody a long time ago. They were moving. Me and a brother was riding in, in, in a truck with him. And he, and the guy was, he was just, all oh, these MF so-and-so. And he just moving. So we was riding as we get there. And so. You know, the guy was with me said, hey, man, you shouldn't talk like this. You got a, a minister with you. He said, oh, I'm saying. He said, well, you said all of them. He said, the Bible says we can be angry. He said, you forgot about the part, be angry, but sin not. <laughs> and the problem is, once you just shut your mouth off, as we all have, 
you can't gather all them seeds back. <laughs> I didn't mean I, I didn't mean to say you was I didn't mean to say your mama wasn't nothing. I just meant I didn't mean your mama. I I meant I meant like your mama. I, you can't take them all back. You done scattered them seed, now they done start growing. Amen. 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 And you know the problem is, some of them will begin to grow and maybe not in places where you wanted them to grow. Yeah. Maybe you wanted them for your husband, but your children got them. Maybe you wanted it for your wife, but they're growing up on your job and amongst your friends. Because they're your seeds. They're in you, and you'll continue to keep putting them out there. Husbands, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 25 and 26, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. It is by your word that you make your wife into what she is. Your wife is the product of what you say she is. If you say she's a knucklehead, she's stupid, she crazy, she ugly, then that's what she'll be. But if you say positive things, you're beautiful. If you say, you know, I appreciate you, man, you're a great cook, you're a great mother. If you say those things, that's what she'll be. Wives, 1 Peter 3, 1 and 4 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. But if any obey not in the word, they may also without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair and wearing of the gold. It's not in just what you wear, but it's about what's coming out of your mouth. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and which is, which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a, I don't know why y'all's is longer, it just happened to be longer. Even the ornament of a what, family? Come on, ladies, come on, say it. <laughs> Listen, you, you have to have a meek and what type of spirit? Men, you have to make sure you say the right thing. And women, you have to make sure that you say the right thing. Which is in the sight of God, what? Amen. That's just what the Bible says. First Peter 3, 8 through 10. Um, Lady Lene, she was almost, almost in my message today. That's why I said go ahead and preach. But First Peter 3, 8 and 10 says, finally, all of you. Turn to somebody and say, pastor's talking about all of us now. He said, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult or with insult. Your mama with your mama, your daddy with your daddy. Were you ugly or were you ugly? Well, you ain't nothing, you ain't nothing. Were you trifling, were you trifling? I hate you, well, I hate you. I don't know why we had them kids. I don't know why we had them either. <laughs> Come on. Do not repay evil. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Your mama, not your mama. Your mama is lovely. Well, you ain't nothing. Well, you're the best. How long can somebody, I just hate you. I love you. I'm done. You know Because to this you were called. Wow, Jesus. Whew. I didn't read that last night. I didn't see that like that last night. Because to this you were what? Called. To this reason were you called. So that when somebody else says something bad about you, you can say something good about them. For this reason, the Bible says when men rail, rail against you and hate you, it's okay. Because I got something for you. He says, because of this you were called so that you may what? I need everybody to say that you may what? That you may inherit a harvest. That you may inherit a blessing. Oh, Jesus. For whosoever would love life and see good days must keep their what? Must keep their, no, must keep their body from evil. Keep your tongue. It's amazing. I'm not going to get finished today, but it is amazing how saints believe that they can say stuff out of their mouth and it is not sin. I don't say, yes, you do. You are saying things that you should not be saying. 
You're talking about the past of people. You're talking about how terrible people are. You're running them down. It is sin. Push somebody and say, Pastor's preaching to you this morning. Whosoever would love life and seek what type of days? Must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from what? You listen, when I see somebody that talk all the time, I know they lying. You just talking too much. At some point, all that stuff couldn't happen. You, <laughs> at some point, you must be exaggerating or, or making something up. You ain't experienced that much. You ain't been nowhere but in Lansing. You just, <laughs> you ain't been nowhere. So you, all that stuff couldn't have happened. Stop blaming people for you not having friends. No one coming to see you. People not liking you. Amen, family. What are you sowing? Hey, man, I know I'm a little tough this morning. Y'all just pray, but I'll be right through it. It's not, it's not everybody else. It's you and how you sow seeds. It's you and how you sow seeds. They just love everybody else but me. They just like everybody else but me. No, uh-uh. It's how you are sowing seeds. But I prophesy, lift, lift your hands on the day. But I prophesy you over, the, over you today, no more bad seeds in your life. Listen, and the bad seeds that you sow, your righteous living will begin to remove all of that. And you, and, and instead, when that stuff come up, I pray in the name of Jesus, speak over your life, that those things will not deter you, that God's going to remove them. He's going to take those things away, and you will only receive the inheritance that God has planned for you, and you will receive the promises that he has for you, and all the good seed that you sow will come up, and the thorns will not choke it, and, and it will not be um, thrown on the wayside, and the rocks and nothing will keep it from from growing up and I'm letting you know that you will have good fruit over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I decree it in Jesus name if you believe it say amen 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 Whew. I feel this message today family your harvest is coming it has to come because God is not a man that he should lie neither I mean he's not like man neither the son of a man that he should repent. If he said it, he will make it good. So I'm going to shut my mouth to negativity today for the prosperous promise for my future on tomorrow. Make that confession. Say, I'm going to shut my mouth to negativity today for the prosperous promise for my future on tomorrow. I'm glad I got to ask myself the question, how is what I'm saying today? Everyone say today. Yes. How is what I'm saying today binding me, binding me to my yesterday? Am I saying something that's binding me to what happened last week? Am I listening to somebody who's saying something that's binding me even to my present and preventing me from enjoying my tomorrow? You know, I watch you, my mother mentioned to me, she said, man, if you, you have you watched um, The Outlander yet? I said, no, mama. She said, get up and watch it, baby. I said, okay. So I turned on The Outlander. Turned on The Outlander. It's about a lady, a nurse um, who in World War II, at the end of the war, who was transported 200 years into the past, and she's trying to get back. She, she goes into, you know, all this. I'll teach about that later. But she ends up, she puts her hand on these rocks, and she ends up, you know, way back in 200 years in the past. And then she finds another nurse friend. If y'all ain't saw it, I, listen, I'm going to keep going. You just, I'm, gonna, I'm a spoiler alert for season one. She finds another one of her friends who's a nurse who was also sent back over 200 years back. And, and she finds out that she's been transported back into the past also. And so I'm watching it. You know, I'm watching, you know, sitting up there about an hour long. I'm watching this because I like to binge watch. I try to wait till it's all over so I can try to watch them all at a time. And so, as, 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 and, and so as, to make a long season short, she, she falls in love with a man in the past while her husband is looking for her in the future. So her husband is looking for her in the future. He finds it. Claire! Claire! He can't find Claire. Claire just went up to the rocks and left, and he's been looking for Claire 
for about six weeks now and he can't find Claire. Claire is in the past trying to get back to Frank, but all at once, the Highland, I don't know what his name, he didn't showed up and she didn't fail for him. So, make a long season short. She marries a man in the past, and at the end of season one, the past husband, because he recognizes that she's been trying to get back to the future, she finally tells him, I need to go back home um, to my husband. She got two wedding rings on. She got the one that Frank gave her and the one that the other guy gave her. And so she's looking at him, so he says, listen, go back home. So she goes to the rocks. The only, I'm waiting because I've been watching all season, waiting for her to go back. She goes to the rocks, and they just take it so long, so I'm fast. So I said, get, touch these rocks so you can get back into the future. Frank is looking for you. They even had a couple of, one of the seasons that Frank was saying, Claire, and Claire heard it. She said, Frank, she said, Frank, wait on me, wait on me. I said, Frank, wait on her. But Frank couldn't wait. And, and, and so it got to the end. Y'all, you're going to be mixed, you're going you, you to take you off course now. It, it gets to the end, and Frank, Frank leaves the rocks, but now she's about to touch the rocks, and the guy says, listen, I'm letting you go. Go back home. And I'm saying, go back home, Claire. And Claire gets to the rocks, and I'm just seeing her looking at the rocks. I fast forward it, and next thing I know, I see Claire. Ain't that she done went, stayed in the past with the other guy. I said, I wish I would. I didn't sit a whole season <laughs> waiting for Claire to get out the past, and she got a chance to, and instead, instead of going home, she going to stay back in the past? You know what happened in the past? She got raped in the past? Her husband whooped her in the past? She was in, she was, uh, um, um, on trial, being a witch in the past? Did none of that stuff happen in the future? Why in the world would you want to live in your past when there's so much other things that are about to happen for you in the future? All the hell you done went through and you want to go back? All the hell you done go through and you want to go back to that? You better grab onto the rock of your salvation and move and be committed to the future of where God is gonna take you. So, unless somebody come to me and tell me that Claire went back to the past, I ain't watching Outlander no more. Went back to the future. Say, I'm, I'm committed to my harvest. I believe in making sure I give you some how-tos. Number one, the thing that we must always have that God sees that pleases him is faith. Everyone say faith. faith. Matthew 9, 27 through 29 says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, What family? Yea, Lord. Oh, they don't give it up. Then, he, then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Faith is a future word, family. You will never be committed to your future if you are not a person of faith. Amen. You've got to believe God. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. Amen. Come on, say, I have to believe God. I have to believe God. I, listen, I know it's not always easy because faith takes that you believe in something that you cannot see. Faith takes that you believe in something that you cannot feel. And so you have to continue to believe what God says and stand on his word. One more time says, I have to believe God. I have to believe God. When you are a person of faith, you are, you are committed to a positive future and you commit to a supernatural life in your future. Supernatural meaning you will experience something that you could not do in your human self. You will experience something that you could not do yourself when you are a person of faith. Stop believing for things that you can do on your best day. I believe I can get this done if I do the no. Stop believing for that's what you can do. Believe for the supernatural to happen in your life. Amen. Yes, yes. That if this happens and this thing, if, if I do this and do this, then things will begin to work. No. Get yourself, get your mind out of it 
that you can get what it is that the word of God says that um, I'm now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even ask. Y'all, that's supernatural. Because I'm thinking of a lot of things and for God to do something beyond what I can even ask or think, it has to be something supernatural. And so I have to make sure that I am a person of someone say faith. faith. Yeah, that I commit myself to faith so that something supernatural can start happening in my life. And I'm going to stop believing for things that I can do on my own. Start believing, for, start believing for things that you have no idea how it's going to come together. How two plus two is going to equal a hundred. I don't know how nor where I'm going to get this much. This is all I have. But in faith, I'm going to trust God and I believe I can have it. There's, there's one part in this event that I want to pay a close attention to. Jesus says, according to your faith. Now, I've always thought this as proportional faith, that you need this much faith than, um, that your faith needs. That means if you're looking to do this, your faith needs to be increased to be able to get something. But this right here is not proportional faith, family. God, Jesus here is not talking about uh, having proportional faith. Yeah, I'm not here one to judge miracles, but I'm thinking if you come to Jesus with a headache, it's much easier to get rid of a headache than it is blindness. All right. And so and so it is always important to recognize when Jesus says have faith, sometimes things seem so big for us that we say, God, listen here, I'm lacking in faith. But the faith here was not proportional, but it was responsive faith. Meaning that you have to live with the attitude of believing that God can do it. And the presence of faith must always be in your life and your mouth and you can receive it. So that when you go into a situation, don't worry if you have enough faith. Just make sure you have faith. See, what God wants you to always make sure you have is what, family? So I'm sorry, well, if I have a grave and I need to move a mountain, I need more faith. No, you come with faith and the grace of God will make up the difference for you. Yeah. See, these, these, these men went to God, they were, they, their eyes were blinded. So he asked them, isn't it amazing that God always looks for something from us before he can give us something? You know, you just can't come and touch the basket and say, God, give me something. No, you always have to give God something. Even if you have to give him the faith. You have to release, and faith without works is dead. You always have to give God something for him to give you something back. And so here Jesus says, do you, listen, do you believe I'm able to do this? Now you might say, well, Pastor, that's easy for them to say that. No, it wasn't that easy because there were people around Jesus who were looking at these guys and saying, no, he can't do it. And if you do this, we're not going to feed you anymore. If you do this, we're going to throw you out to church. If you say that you believe in him, we're going to ostracize you. And you got to think that the way that family wasn't like you, the United States. If they ostracized you out to church, they threw you out the city, you would die there. So for them to be bold enough to say, yes, Jesus, I believe you can do this. They were saying that he was more than just a prophet, but that he was the Messiah. And when you open up your mouth in faith and say, God, I'm going to believe, although everybody around me is saying that this cannot happen, this will not work, but I have the faith. I don't know how much is needed, but I just know the presence of faith is going to be released in my life. And let me let you know something supernatural. The blindness will be moved off your eyes, and not only will you see, but others will begin to see what it is that God can do in your life. Put your hands together because I'm going to quit right there.